Let's talk about render modes in .NET 8 for Blazor. We have four modes ranging from really simple to slightly more complicated. And the first one is static server-side rendering. That's what we're seeing here. In this mode, static HTML is returned from the server. So the component runs on the server, static HTML is returned. There are no socket connections, no web assembly, no long running components, no component state to really worry about, just pure rendering on the server and static HTML being returned to the browser. But then what if we want to interact with our components? Well, at the moment, this button isn't going to do anything at all. To make that work, we need to enable one of the interactive modes. And the simplest one to switch to is interactive server. As soon as we enable that, we get a socket connection in the browser. And now what will happen is when we interact with our component, that interaction will be sent over this socket connection to the server. The server will process that and handle that event uh, generate a diff between the DOM that it had before and the new DOM and then send that diff back up to the browser. The browser then takes that diff and applies it to the DOM in the browser so we can see what happens. But what if you want to use WebAssembly? Well, you can do the same thing, but with interactive WebAssembly. And this time we get WebAssembly loading in the browser and this component is now running on WebAssembly. The interactions still work, but they're happening in the client. But what about auto mode? Well, auto mode is the clever one. So if we enable interactive auto, when you enable interactive auto, you get the best of both worlds. To see this, we just need to clear the application state as if we're starting fresh. And this time what we'll see, in this mode, we get a socket connection first and then Blazor WebAssembly downloads in the background. Now that means that on the first time that we hit this page, we're gonna use Blazor Server so that we get that fast initial load and we can interact with our banner using Blazor Server. Blazor WebAssembly won't kick in automatically, but when I hit this component again or refresh to load it again, this time it's gonna use Blazor WebAssembly and all the interactions are gonna be happening in the client. You get a fast initial load, interactivity from the get-go, but you don't have to wait for WebAssembly, but then the next time you hit the page, WebAssembly will kick in and you'll get it. So those are the four render modes. Now, which one would I use when? Well, typically, static server-side is the easiest way to get started, and especially for line of business apps or anything where you're just displaying information, it's a perfect choice. If you enable interactivity, the easiest way to do that is using interactive server because you don't need to make many changes to your underlying application or components, and then you get interactivity. From there, you might want to use Blazor WebAssembly, especially if you uh, are in a situation where you don't want to use lots of socket connections and have to have a server that can handle those, and you don't want to have to explain to your users why they're getting an error when the socket connection is lost. You can use WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a bit more work to set up because you need a separate client project to put your code into um, so it can be shipped to the browser. And the fourth mode, Interactive Auto, is perhaps the best of all worlds. You still have to do that extra mile to set up your app so that your components can run in the browser. But the good news is that your users will get a nice fast initial load without waiting for WebAssembly. But then most of the time they're going to be using WebAssembly after that.